challenge. Um, so I'm here to talk about our project on the deep water port in the Berbice. Um, it's a lot of talk of local content, of course, at this conference, um, very important subject. And one of the most effective ways, of course, in which local content can be engaged in an effectively offshore oil and gas um, industry is through ports. You've got to be able to access those offshore fields and it's one way of connecting local content onshore to what's going on offshore. CGX has been involved in a deep water port since 2010. Uh, this is long before I actually joined the company. And so as I did this morning, we again want to recognize and think we've people in the room this, morning, this afternoon that were heavily involved in the first visioning of this. Well, why Berbice? Um, I don't know how many of you that are from offshore um, know of the Berbice County in Guyana. We refer to it as our ancient county. But Berbice is, um, is really a special place. I'll talk a little bit about why the river and it, this location makes sense. But before I do so, let me, let me tell you some things about Berbice itself. Um, so it's referred to as our ancient county. Um, Berbice is serviced by four technical institutes and a branch of the University of Guyana. One of those technical institutes is now being led by Professor Clem Sankat, who's here. Um, who was formerly the principal of uh, University of the West Indies at St. Augustine in Trinidad. He is leading the transformation of one of those technical institutes, the Port Morant Technical Institute into the new oil and gas national institute. And this is very, very significant. The Port Morant uh, facility has a very uh, long history of training um, technical people in fabrication and mechanical skills that we exported around the world. Little known, Port Morant in its first year of graduates created a, a gentleman called Kennard Singh from Albion in, on the quarantine coast. Kennard went on to become the general manager of a company called National Oil Wells in Alberta. And National Oil Wells was manufacturing most of the draw works that were being used in the offshore drilling. And this is a young man that came from Albion on the quarantine course from Port Morant. So I'm delighted that Clem has taken this up. But that's one of the aspects of Berbice, which is very, very interesting. Berbice also skilled labor and trained labor that are available. So it's, it's, a, it's a place which is really quite ripe for, for transformation. And Berbice offers some additional advantages where the CGX deep water port is located. So the river is traditionally the deepest channel, the deepest natural channel in the country. All of the country's rivers are gigantic sedimentation systems. And those sedimentation systems literally are depositing our highlands into the Atlantic Ocean. This is very common of most of the major river systems in South America. And it's well known that as the earth spins and the Coriolis force throws all of that sediment onto the Western banks of the river, resulting in all of the main deep channels in this country because of the laws of physics being along the Eastern bank. The Burbies facility, and again, I was not the person who chose this, um, but it was chosen well. The Burbies facility is on the eastern bank of the Burbies River, very close to where the channel is, 
resulting in a minimi minimal need to dredge in order to access that naturally deep channel. Um, so this facility is being built. Uh, before I go on to talk about the facility, let me, let me just tell you some additional reasons why Rubies made sense. Um, the facility is far enough away, about five kilometers away from built up areas, but close enough to be able to access the town of New Amsterdam in terms of hospitality, logistics, labor, facilities, and services. And again, with very, very motivated chambers of commerce and very involved town councils. Burbis happens to host three of the towns that are in Guyana. The most density of towns in the country is in Burbis. So it's a very organized place and very motivated because of its economic organization. So this the Burbies bridge zone, which is quite important legislatively, um, and so allow unfettered access to the open sea. Um, the facility is about 12 and a half hours sailing to, uh, for example, the Stabroek block. And so it offers quite natural advantages to, um, for example, accessing shore bases offshore. Trinidadian shore bases, of course, you need to steam for about 48 hours in order to do the same thing. Um, so it, it, because of the technical institutes, because of the university, because of the concentration of sugar on fabrication, um, there's, a, there's a tremendous uh, amount of skilled welders, skilled plumbers and engineers in Burbies. And as I said, they're, they're quite motivated. Um, our facility itself is located on 30 acres of land. And Burbis is also well known for its swamps, its savannas, and its agricultural land. And so when you develop facilities like these, one has to be very careful, of course, about the environment. Of those, those 30 acres of land, we have set aside 10 acres on it uh, of standing old growth mangroves to remain standing oil road mangroves that will not be cleared. And those are effectively going to be the source of an MOU that's about to be signed, where we look at the coexistence of mangrove habitats with commercial activity on our rivers. This is very important because as has been articulated, if we want to see progress, we've got to disturb the environment somehow. But if we're going to do that, we must dis disturb it as intelligently and as carefully as we can. So we're delighted that we're not going to be cutting down the standing old growth mangroves. So 20 of those 30 acres will be developed. Um, the, the pictures have been cycling through. We, those 20 acres have 400 meters of frontage. Um, and the work on shore, as you can see from the pictures, have been well advanced. The construction of docks, and dredging will begin very shortly. EPC contractor is being selected right now. Um, and that will be followed by construction of the onshore buildings. Um, some of it will be done in unison. We are targeting the end of 2022 for the operation of the offshore supply base component of the port. Um, the port itself, when completed, will have an an offshore supply component, which will be, which will have uh, drilling mud supply, cement supply, fuel, fresh water, ship to shore, pipe storage, all of the traditional services that one would have in an offshore supply base. But importantly, a component of this port is also dedicated to agriculture and general cargo. And that brings me back to Burbis again. Between 30 and 65% of all the rice grown in Guyana is grown in Burbis. Uh, most of that rice acquires a 20% surcharge to go from Burbis to Georgetown, 
which is choked and congested because it wasn't built to handle the growth that we have. And so therefore that rice puts our millers and our farmers at a great disadvantage for coming to, to, to uh, Georgetown. Part of the component of this port will be purpose-built to ensure that grains can be handled rapidly, safely, and to be quality controlled at the port so that pricing as a function of quality can be done seamlessly. In addition, the port has developed advanced talks with a consortia in Nuraima in Brazil, one of the shortest routes to the sea from Roraima is across into Guyana, across the Burbese River and into the Burbese coast. So this has become, it was not by design, it has become a great focus of the port to look at grains. Most of the containerized traffic in Guyana, all of it currently comes through Port Georgetown and then it has to go by road to region six and five. So we have looked at proportionally a radius from our port to better service those consumers with containerized transport, mainly as a way of reducing the cost to those consumers. And as a result, a small component of the cargo side of the port will be focused on containerized traffic as well as uh, destuffing. Part of the, the, the importance of, of logistics ports is ensuring that when you ship things, a way that the containers that you, you then empty are filled to go the reverse route. And so part of the discussion is whilst grain comes from Roraima, grain comes eventually from the interior savannas, intermediate savannas of the Berbice River, that fertilizer and, and blended fuel goes the other way. So that you can, you can extract the most maximum efficiencies required for the operation of a logistics space. So um, that part of the facility, the grain facility, um, the containerized facility and specialized cargo um, are targeted for, and we're calling that the multi-purpose terminal for obvious reasons, uh, that is targeted for the end of 2023. So construction is proceeding well. We have had no major setbacks and we're hoping to add capacity in a very short order to, um, to the growing uh, oil and gas. And, um, and, and of course, as we look at the kinds of explosive growth that Winston Brassington was talking about and that we see published 20% last year, perhaps 50% this year, um, ultimately that GDP also means a buoyancy in buying power, a buoyancy in terms of the amount of consumer goods that come here, and as well, a buoyancy, the, the amount of agricul arable agricultural land that are in this country is really quite tremendous. We have a population density of about four square kilometers to, per to one person. That's a remarkable, remarkably low density coupled with a tremendous uh, supply of freshwater and arable land means that our, agricult our agricultural capacity to even service the Caribbean region, which has a, 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 a crippling import uh, for grains, um, is a significant opportunity as we heard the president say, and as many, many people have pointed out. So the acreage elasticity in Berbice is quite significant, particularly when you think of putting a, an additional 20% of competitiveness in the hands of farmers and millers. So we're tremendously excited about this. Obviously we're uh, a very small company. We've got our hands full, filled with exploration, but we have been very happy to do this project. Um, and uh, I, I want to say that um, one of the things that the country needs to do as we move forward is to ensure that all of the ports that we're building have sustainable ways of continuing business. And so one of the things that we have at CGX focused on very carefully is minimizing CapEx, maximizing short-term cash returns and growing as demand grows. So we are not building and saying come because we've built it. We're building only for capacity that exists 
but ensuring that the architecture that we pursue is open-ended enough to build as that demand increases. So we've been quite frugal and quite careful, and therefore we are quite confident of the facility because of that approach. So I thank you very much for listening again, and thank, thank you for being allowed to deputize for Mr. D'Alba.